Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. We are going to look at dilution. So what dilution is, is adding water to a solution that's already been created. So if we look at the solution in here in this first beaker, notice how there are six uh, molecules in there. And over here, if we count, there are also six molecules. So these two beakers contain the same number of solute molecules. What ended up changing was the volume of water. So this is what a dilution looks like. And it's asking you, did the moles of solute change? No, the moles of solute do not change. What changes is the ratio between the solute and the volume of solution, right? Because you're adding more water, you're increasing the denominator in that molarity uh, calculation. So let's look at what dilution looks like mathematically. So over here, this is, uh, this first one is M1 and V, oops, let's make that a one, M1 and V1, right? So it's the first situation. Over here, this is M2 and V2 in this dilution equation. So when we look at M1 and V1, remember that we said molarity was moles over liters. And the volume that we're gonna use is also liters. And then when we look at M2 and V2, M is molarity, moles over liters, V2, still a volume, in liters. So what this is saying is your liters end up canceling out. And so your final um, statement is that moles equals moles, which is mathematically what we said up here that there's no change in the moles or the total amount of solute. Rather, what's changing is the volume and the ratio between the moles and the volume. So let's look at how we can use a dilution equation to solve a couple of typical problems. All right, so on this page, we've got a problem up here at the top that's talking about iron three nitrate. And it's telling you that you have uh, a milliliter of 0.236 molar iron 3 nitrate that you've diluted to 100 milliliters. So here's part of the problem with dilution problems. They don't seem too hard until you get some tricky wording. And what you want to look for is the word of, because that word of links these two numbers together, and then this number is on its own. So that way, when we start filling out that M1V1 equals M2V2 equation, the one milliliter and the 0.26 or 36 molar are on the same side of one equation. Notice how it says diluting that. So those two numbers are technically M1 and V1. So what we can do is start to just kind of put in the components. And we can put in the uh, molarity, the 0 0.236 molar. And then let's remind ourselves, iron 3 nitrate is going to be FeNO33. So that's your molarity. And now let's put in our volume. Now remember for your volume, this technically needs to be in liters. And right here, you're given this in milliliters. So to make things kind of straightforward, I'm gonna actually link my two ideas here. Instead of being off by a decimal place, which I feel like happens when you have something that's really small, like a milliliter, I'm just going to do a little mini dimensional analysis in here and say, put this in. 
so that I'm not off by a decimal place by accident. So then I am going to calculate my molarity, right? That's what I am looking for. And I'm going to have my volume listed, which this one I feel like people can do more confidently in their heads. They're, at least I know I feel more confident because I see this one more often. Remember, all those zeros are significant. For heaven's sakes. All right, I'm just also going to put a unit down here because I'm a good chemist. And now we need to solve for M2. And when we solve for M2, what we're going to do is take these, multiply them, and then divide by the point 0.1. And so what you should get for your M2 is 0 0.00236 moles per liter of iron 3 nitrate. Let's try another one. This one says calculate the volume of a two molar NaOH solution to be used to prepare 250 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH solution. Okay, so for this one, again, we know that we are used doing a dilution. The way that I know that I'm doing a dilution is when I look at the components, I'm starting with NaOH, I'm ending with NaOH. So no chemical reaction has happened. All that's happened is we've added water. So the other thing to watch out for is the word of. So that of is linking those two components together. So when we link those two components together, they, we know they have to be on one side of the equation. So see how it says used to prepare? Those are technically M2 and V2. The reason I'm saying technically is because you could have them on the other side and it would be fine. You'd end up with the same answer mathematically, and that's okay. So I'm going to show you a different way to do this one, and not completely different, just a little shortcut that you'll probably appreciate. Did you notice how up here in this example we divided this side by a thousand, and over here I also divided this by a thousand? Well, in math class, when you do the same thing to both sides like that, it doesn't um, change the answer. Uh, what I mean by that is in this problem, I'm going to show you that you could keep these in milliliters and still end up with uh, a proper answer. So let's put in our two molar. We're searching for volume. Our M2 is what we want to create at the end, and our V2 I'm going to leave in milliliters. Now here's the deal. It's technically not correct because your molarity right here is in moles per liter. But if you end up keeping your volume on this side in milliliters, it ends up being mathematically equivalent. And it's one place where chemists will allow you not to have proper units and still, you know, be okay with it. Because, you know, we're pretty big sticklers about units. So here's the deal. If you put in milliliters here and you're solving for a volume, when you go through and you calculate by taking your 0.1 and you multiply it by the 250, and then you divide that by 2, you are going to get... 12.5 and because you had milliliters here you have milliliters here so if you're unsure of what i'm talking about try this problem again except plug in milliliters instead of liters on both sides and you will get the same numerical value for your answer so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna stop here and then we're going to pick up with um, titration. Before we go on to titration, 
there's an important statement down here at the bottom. This equation that we just saw is only used for dilution problems. You may not use this for titration that we're doing on the next page. So keep that in mind in the next video. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.